Hey you guys, it's your girl T and I want to come on camera and talk to you guys about the whole situation that's going on right now in South Carolina. As you guys all know, I lived in the Carolinas for almost 10 years with my kids. My youngest was born in North Carolina. Um, I had a home in South Carolina. I lived in Charlotte, North Carolina for a long time. So this definitely hits home because I still have a lot of friends and you know people I consider like family that are down there in the Carolinas right now. So this is just really, really heartbreaking. So what went down is that last night in Charleston, South Carolina at Mother Emanuel um, AME Church, um, they were leading a Bible study. And so all these people were there, including Reverend um, Clementa Pickney. He's the Reverend of the church, and he was also a state senator down in South Carolina. He was just recently um, on the political grind with uh, Hillary Clinton. And he's also been fighting to have police down there wear body cameras. So both the police are safe and so are the citizens. So he's been fighting and doing things for the black community for many years. He became a pastor at the age of 18. And sadly, he was one of the nine people killed during this massacre. So what happened is that during the Bible study, 21 year old white boy named Dylan Storm Roof decided to walk into this uh, Bible study. He stayed there for an hour. He prayed with the parishioners, you know, talked to them, acted like everything was all good. Then he pulled out a handgun and just started blasting people. This young man shot nine people. Eight were dead right there at the scene. By the grace of God, a five-year-old girl was able to survive only because she played dead. He left one woman alive so that way she could tell a story about what happened. After he shot these people, he ran out the church. And if you guys notice in my post that I posted this morning on Facebook, I said my prayers go to South Carolina and North Carolina. The Carolinas are a sister state. And one thing I know about the Carolinas is whenever somebody does some dirt in one part of the Carolinas, they always run to the other. So if something goes down in South Carolina, nine times out of 10, the perpetrator is gonna run to North Carolina and vice versa. So that's why I kept both Carolinas in prayer. And of course, this young man was caught today in North Carolina, 20 minutes away from Charlotte and thank goodness nobody else was killed in his deadly rampage this whole situation is just really heartbreaking I want you guys to go ahead and watch these news clips um Obama is also speaking out about this he's also talking about gun reform that's also causing a lot of controversy online once again but I'm just glad that Obama is taking time out to speak about this very important situation these are the things that I feel like Obama should speak about and leave all the pop culture stuff to us vloggers and social media I don't think the president needs to be covering pop culture he needs to focus on things like this so go ahead and watch these news clips and i'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary eight and nine last night a gunman walked in during bible study stayed with a group for nearly an hour then suddenly opened fire police have released these surveillance photos of the suspect calling him armed and dangerous schools across the area on lockdown right now here's what we know right now nine people are dead six women three men the gunman is still on the loose and described as being in his early 20s the justice department has just officially launched a hate crime investigation and dozens of fbi agents have been dispatched to help hunt down the killer and this church mother emmanuel truly historic one of the oldest black churches in the south look at this photo right here, Dr. Martin Luther King. He spoke there in 1962. The church became a center for organizing during the civil rights movement. So horrific, so sacrilegious that this kind of violence was unleashed in that sanctuary. ABC Steve Osasami is live on the scene this morning. Good morning, Steve. Good morning to you, George. This church is directly behind me. I don't know if you can see the steeple right there. Police have the streets blocked off here as they search through garbage bins and back alleys, apparently looking for something this gunman might have dropped. This is no doubt going to be a very painful day for families here, only made worse by the fact that this happened at a place of worship. We call on that name of Jesus. This morning, families here are grieving and praying for the nine people killed while worshiping their God. It is unfathomable that somebody in today's society would walk into a church when people are having a prayer meeting and take their lives. Authorities are searching for this man seen in surveillance video outside the church, and they're calling this a hate crime, saying that he's young and white in his early 20s and walked into a Bible study at Emmanuel AME, a black church with a long history, where he sat for an hour before getting up and firing at parishioners. Apparently we had someone running around armed downtown. Six women and three men died. I do believe this was a hate crime. Police say the alleged gunman is wearing a distinctive sweatshirt, Timberland boots, and is driving a car with an unusual front license plate. They still think he's somewhere in the area and consider him armed and dangerous. Authorities are begging the public for help. We can catch this no good 
horrible person to see that he pays the price. And then what we will do and what this community has always done is we're going to put our arms around that church and that church family. Three people survived the shooting, including a five-year-old girl who police say is only alive because she played dead. We got uh, two people coming out, an adult female and a child that was found in the room. They need to get checked out. One of the victims is the pastor of the church, 41-year-old Senator Clemena Pinckney, who earned distinction as the youngest African-American state lawmaker in South Carolina history. Earlier in the day, the pastor had been campaigning with Hillary Clinton. Pinckney leaves a wife and two children. We're learning the gunman told a female survivor that he would let her go so she could tell everyone what happened. This is a situation that is um, unacceptable in any society and especially uh, in our society, in our city. Michelle and I know several members of Emmanuel AME Church. We knew their pastor, Reverend Clementa Pickney, who along with eight others gathered in prayer and fellowship and was murdered last night. And to say our thoughts and prayers are with them and their families and their community doesn't say enough to convey the heartache and the sadness and the anger that we feel. Any death of this sort is a tragedy. Any shooting involving multiple victims is a tragedy. There is something particularly heartbreaking about a death happening in a place in which we seek solace and we seek peace, in a place of worship. Mother Emanuel is, in fact, more than a church. This is a place of worship that was founded by African Americans seeking liberty. This is a church that was burned to the ground because its worships, uh, worshipers worked to end slavery. When there were laws banning all black church gatherings, they conducted services in secret. When there was a nonviolent movement to bring our country closer in line with our highest ideals, some of our brightest leaders spoke and led marches from this church's steps. This is a sacred place in the history of Charleston and in the history of America. The FBI is now on the scene with local police and more of the Bureau's best are on the way to join them. The Attorney General has announced plans for the FBI to open a hate crime investigation. We understand that the suspect is in custody uh, and I'll let the best of law enforcement do its work to make sure that justice is served. Until the investigation is complete, I'm necessarily constrained in terms of talking about the details of the case. But I don't need to be constrained about the emotions that tragedies like this raise. I've had to make statements like this too many times. Communities like this have had to endure tragedies like this too many times. We don't have all the facts, but we do know that, once again, innocent people were killed in part because someone who wanted to inflict harm had no trouble getting their hands on a gun. Now is the time for mourning and for healing. But let's be clear. At some point, we as a country will have to reckon with the fact that this type of mass violence does not happen in other advanced countries. It doesn't happen in other places with this kind of frequency. And it is in our power to do something about it. I say that recognizing the politics in this town uh, foreclose a lot of those avenues right now. But it'd be wrong for us not to acknowledge it. 
All right, so you guys just watched the news clip. And like I said, a lot of things disturb me with this story. You know, my heart definitely goes out to these nine victims. I saw people on Twitter tweeting at their grandmother. You know, they just found out that their grandmother was one of the victims and died. You know, other people were saying that, you know, their cousins, their relatives. So this is definitely hitting Charleston hard. Charleston is a small community. Everybody dang near knows everybody. You know, it's it's very close. It's very tight knit. It's a very religious community. Um, I love how Fox News is now trying to spin this and say that this is an act of terrorism, not an act of racism. You know, you they even have a black man on there talking about that this isn't about race, it's an attack on Christianity. Um, excuse me, in my personal opinion, this is an attack on both. And why can't it be an attack on both? Why does he just need to be charged with one thing? Why can he not be charged with both a hate crime and terrorism. You feel me? I feel like this young man, Dylan, is definitely a suspected white supremacist. As a matter of fact, I don't even suspect his ass. His jacket says everything that I need to know. That patch on his jacket, that he, that, that flag on his jacket, that patch that he's proudly wearing in that picture where he looks like a damn member of the Children of the Corn, um, that patch is the old flag of Rhodesia and South Africa. That's when it was under apartheid. That's when the whites ran South Africa. A lot of white supremacists, especially white supremacists out in Europe, they love that patch. They love to wear that flag because that's when the whites controlled South Africa. And so for this young boy to be wearing that patch lets me know that he's down with white supremacy. Lets me know that he's a racist. I don't even suspect that. I definitely feel that he's a racist. Let's keep it 100 like the picture that's been flashing behind me. If this was a Muslim man who went into a synagogue or who went into a Christian church and he just started blasting people away aimlessly, everyone would consider that an act of terrorism. So I feel like this is no different than what this young white man did. He went into this church, he terrorized these people, he killed them based on their religion and based on their ethnicity. I definitely feel like he should be charged with both crimes, a terroristic crime and a hate crime. That's the picture that I'm talking about. We should not make excuses for this young boy whatsoever. Another thing that I find really funny is that it's funny that whenever it's a white suspect, whenever a white person does something, nine times out of ten, they're able to be apprehended without being killed, without being beat up, without being maimed. Then we've had so many stories of black men running away from the police officers, not showing any type of violence towards the police, but somehow they were still, you know, beat up, harassed, shot, and everything else. But this young white boy can basically kill nine lives and he gets apprehended safely. You know, if that isn't white privilege, I don't know what is. And another thing that people need to realize is this is a historically black church. This church has been around since the 1800s. A lot of slaves used to pray there. It was also a sanctuary for the civil rights movement. Dr. Martin Luther King was also there at this church. So this church is very historic. This church means a lot to the people of South Carolina, especially to the people of Charleston. This is a very historical, and this young boy definitely knew what he was doing when he did this, when he went into that church, and he possibly knew that the past was going to be there preaching and being that this pastor is one of the youngest state senators in that state you know he has a very good rapport with people people love this senator he's doing things with hillary clinton i definitely feel like this young man plotted this and he planned this out and they're saying that he's a lone gunman but that does not mean that this young man did not have help did not have encouragement another thing that i find very disturbing about this case is that they're saying that up until march he's never had a criminal record but March of this year, he was arrested for his first offense, which was drug possession. His birthday was in April, okay? So he got in trouble just a month before, but somehow his father felt that it was okay to buy this young man who had just got in trouble for drug possession the month before a gun for his 21st birthday. It's like, where the hell is the common sense with some of these parents? I'm sorry, but this children of the corn looking ass motherfucker, I want to buy his ass a set of silverware, let alone presenting him with a 45 caliber handgun. It's like, what the hell was the father thinking? He's already showing signs that he's getting in trouble. He's not doing the right thing. So you reward him for his birthday by buying him a gun? I mean, this is just insane to me. This is just insane to me. This is going to be on the father's conscience for a long time because he used that same gun to go in there and go kill these people. You know, so the whole situation is just heartening. I'm just tired of all this violence. I'm just tired of all this racial tension. I'm just tired of all this drama. You know, this is just really, really sad. And this was just so uncalled for. And like I said, my heart definitely goes out to the people down there in the Carolinas, you know, to everybody in that community. This is just really, really heartbreaking. The Carolinas is a beautiful place with beautiful people. And this is just really sad to have this going on down there and to have innocent people lose their lives behind some 
and racist. So anyways, you guys, go ahead and leave a comment. Let's get the discussion popping. What did you guys think about this situation when you first heard about Dylan Roof and what he did? And then how do you feel about the police apprehending him and bringing him to justice safely? And then also, what do you feel about Obama's speech? And the fact that, once again, gun reform is being spoken about. Do you agree? Do you feel like there should be a gun reform? Or do you feel like, no, that there shouldn't be a gun reform? And how do you feel about Fox News trying to spin this and say this is more of a religious issue as opposed to a racial issue? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. All right. Deuces. Hey, YouTube. It's your girl, Lovely T. And you can show me some love by hitting that subscribe button, watching my previous videos, and following me on social media.